We welcome you in. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you're at around the world, for Titans of the Ring. I am your host, the Titan Rising Casey, hanging out with the St. Sins Dylan tonight. Our opening match, Andre Robinson versus Harry Combs in a 20-minute time limit matchup. We will get to see if Andre Robinson can get back on track after the losing streak and the dissension that has been seen between him and Bryson Teller. Yeah, we know that we have seen a whole lot of aggression from Bryson Teller after Andre Robinson has been on quite a bit of a losing streak. Hopefully this opening match against Harry Combs will allow him back in the good graces of his mentor. This is not a number one contenders match or a championship bout. We do see the champion Enyo taking on Karadagata, but there is a stipulation. If Karadagata manages to win this match, she books her ticket straight onwards and upwards to the stairway to stardom to face Enyo for that championship on our grandest stage, our magnum opus, if you will. But there's a ticket that will be booked tonight no matter what. The Tennessee Tens, the Silver Stallions, number one contenders match. Thank you so much to Mythos Technology for sponsoring this match as well as K2 Gaming. We will see who will face High Rise in that tag team ladder match at our show of shows, the penultimate, the finale, the great show, Stairway to Stardom. Yeah, and after that, we have another tag team match between a mentor and mentee, KJM and Fenton Ferris, taking on the newly dubbed Carnival of Chaos, Silence, the Mime, and the Jester, Flint Finkel. What a weird combination we're going to see here tonight, but we're going to have to see how Fenton Ferris and KJM, how they fare against this new team. Especially with KJM's recent aggression due to the hands of this young man right here, Ben Day Sung, the man who has beat KJM two weeks in a row. He gets to take on one half of the Stairway to Startle main event, Jacob Cass, the man who will face the regional champion Bryson Teller at the show of shows. Jacob Cass looking for a tune-up match against the young rookie Ben Day Sung in our main event tonight. Yep, and first, here we are opening up with Andre Robinson versus Harry Combs. You can see Andre Robinson coming out to the ring. He is focused. He is fearless. Harry Combs is going to have a big challenge stacked against him tonight with Andre Robinson. A very angry Andre Robinson. Andre Robinson has been quite deterred after the losing streak he has suffered since uh, right before the Beat the Heat tournament where he lost did not advance to the finals so didn't even make it out of the first round out of the quarterfinals yeah so andre robinson is going to have to get back on track if he wants to regain his main event status heading into stairway or heading into beat the heat uh if you don't mind i sorry I, I made that slight mistake he had the second best record in all of titans only behind the man who won the beat the heat tournament bryson teller um, so Andre Robinson looking to get back in the win column, but he has lost, I believe it is five straight matches. Jacob Cass, Adrian Flynn. Um, the mime is your favorite. Adrian Flynn. Um, Andrew Sullivan, and he has lost a few more times. Jacob Cass, as well as not managing uh, to get any headway in that fatal four-way to go on to start him to face his mentor, Bryson Teller. Yep, but Harry Combs here has a negative record. So either which way this goes is kind of a bad one. If Harry Combs loses this match, well, he's probably going to have a hit. Oh, my God! A hefty what was that? hospital bill is what I was going to say, and you can see the damage done early on in this match with that power bomb. That was gruesome. I don't think Andre Robinson's playing around tonight. And I don't think you can stand to play around with – Someone like Harry Combs. I mean, let's be real. The man's 100 pounds soaking wet. He's lucky if he gets paid a hot dog at the pay window when he wrestles. I mean, he's here. He's part of the company. He's earned his right to be here. He's he's agreed to work and try to grow up. He's learning as a young wrestler. But he, as you said, he's negative. He has no wins in his win column. Everything has been a loss for Harry Combs. And you're facing someone who is more than capable of not just being in the regional championship picture, but a man who could have been the regional champion. 
Now, Andre Robinson is a dangerous man to a good wrestler. Harry Combs, I don't think you knew what you were in for when you signed off for this match, bud. I do apologize, Fairly Grim. That was uh, a bit shocking to me, and uh, as you can tell, I, I kind of reacted. Uh, remember, though, here on Titans, we are an interactive stream. If you are a part of the chat, you can tune in and chime in. Let us know what you think of those that you're watching. Let us know who you like, what you like, what you dislike. Let us know where your biscuit is buttered when it comes to Titans of the Ring. Well, I think I know which way this match is leaning. Andre Robinson is putting the beat down on Harry Combs. Those sharp elbows to the face of Harry Combs. I'm surprised he didn't bust them open. I'm absolutely shocked. Those right hands of Andre Robinson are just absolutely... Harry Combs on the defense here. Actually got a reversal in there, ducking underneath the lariat of Andre Robinson. But it didn't last for long because here you see those quick shots right to the face of Harry Combs. And those bombs we were talking about, that right hand, that heavy, heavy right hand. It's not... Those gloves aren't there for, the, for Harry Combs' protection. They're there to make sure that Andre Robinson doesn't bust open his knuckles because there ain't... There ain't no stopping that power. No, there is not. Knocking Harry comes outside the ring now. Andre Robinson is back on top. If this is what we're going to see from Andre Robinson, you have to think he is quickly going to put himself back in that upper echelon of wrestlers here in Titans the Ring after the the surprising fall from grace if we're being honest it's hard to to understand how andre has managed to lose but if you look at who he's lost to it's no slouches yes andrew sullivan adrian flynn are tag team wrestlers who we'll see later on tonight in that number one contenders match the silver stallions were in the tournament because they proved they could hang when it wasn't a tag match that is absolutely true. Andrew Sullivan was the third man to be announced for the tournament. So, you know, it's not easy pickings when it comes to facing either of the Silver Stallions. They are, it's like going up against a brick wall when we're talking about Andrew Sullivan. That's what Andre Robinson had to face. And Adrian is the pro wrestler's pro wrestler. He is one of the most technically gifted and sound pro wrestlers in all of Titans of the Ring. So Andre taking those losses were nothing to scoff at unless you are the regional champion Dawson Taylor. And you know he's incensed because Andre keeps losing to the man that he'll face at Stardom. Oh my goodness, that big knee from Andre. That has to be it. Robinson said, no, this is not over yet. This match is done when I'm done with you. Stevon, you're right, he is beating him down. Not another. Oh, my gosh. Two and three. Andre finds his way back in the win column and back at the pay window. You hope that Bryson Taylor is excited and he's happy. But, as we said earlier, it's either you lose to Andre Robinson and you look like a fool, or you beat, or, I mean, you, you lose to Harry Combs and you look like a fool, or you beat a guy that you should have been beating all along. Andre Robinson with a dominant victory here tonight. But it's stairway to stardom. Here is another couple of action-packed competitors who are going one-on-one -on -one for the Twitch Championship. It is Fenton, Ferris, and Deacon Price going one-on-one -on -one for the Twitch Championship on July 29th at stairway to stardom. The Twitch Championship? What is that? Well, that is going to be our championship defended weekly, every week on Titans of the Ring. But speaking of championship matches, Cara Degata versus Inyo. This one-on-one -on -one non title belt is going non title bout is going to determine whether or not Cara Degata will be the one going on to face Inyo at Stairway to Stardom. I will say I bet Code Red, Doodle Bopped, among others, including Fairly Grim are probably upset that we're not seeing Alexis Slater in this situation. But Alexis took the brunt of that beating last week, was not cleared to compete. She is allowed to be ringside tonight for the Stallions, but she is not cleared to compete. But please remember that you can watch us every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're watching on YouTube right now, we are live on the Titan Rising KM channel 
That is Titan Rising KM. The T, R, and the K and the M are all capital. Throw that in your Twitch. Find us. Give us a, uh, a follow and be a part of the Titans of the Ring community. Titans of the Ring can be caught up with after hours by following our Twitter at Titan Rising KM. Joining the Rising Discord as well as watching on the K2 Gaming KY YouTube as Dylan so graciously threw out our socials. I think Kingsley and Bailey are excited for this matchup here tonight with Cardagata versus the Titans women's champion, Inyo. Look at that beautiful title. It's a shame that it's around the waist of someone who is willing to crush this division to just stay on top. You see Fairly Grimm saying that she should have lost her title. The booking committee would not do it. There was too many people that went and tried to advocate for that, but they said they would rather see her go to stardom because as she is the champion, that was her prerogative. But I still think she stepped, took a step too far. But that beautiful championship, I can't wait to see the championship you're talking about defended weekly on Titans program, the Twitch championship, Fit and Ferris, Deacon Price. That's going to be outstanding. We're going to have a championship match every single week. Yeah, and here right out the gate, we see Inyo coming at Cardagata with a huge smack right to the chest. Heavy knee right to the gut of Cardagata. And this is a lot of that hard-hitting style we've seen from Inyo over the past couple of months since her debut. Since her debut at Bluegrass Brawl where she attacked Ronan and beat her down. I got to question the validity of the cat there. She didn't land on her feet from that fall. No, she did not. But looking at the opponent standing across from her and the absolute brutality she's unleashing on her, I don't know how she could. Car managing to get a little bit of offense, knocking Inyo into the barricade. And she takes her up. Oh, no. Boot right to the side of the head, giving Inyo a taste of her own medicine right there. Inyo meeting Kara back in the ring, goes for that. Just that quick shoulder block to knock Kara back down, but not able to connect. But Inyo quickly finding her way back to the offense. And that boot right to the temple of Kara Nagata. A lot of strong kicks we've seen from Inyo thus far. Something that we've seen from Inyo as long as she's been competing here during her run is that she's not necessarily just out here to win. She's not just out here for the winner's purse like a lot of our wrestlers are. A lot of people are here to make their money. Now she is looking for something much different. Pro wrestling is a combat sport, which means people are gonna get hurt. And I think Inyo relishes in it. Inyo has stated one too many times that being champion is not what it's all about to her, yes. She wants that title. Yes, she wants to contain the belt, not even allowing that drop to connect. But part of her whole desire was so Ronan never got her hands on it. She doesn't want any of these women to have their chance. Oh my God. Kendo sticks right to the gut, to that midsection of Cardagata. Is this a no disqualification match? I believe it, it is. Be. Who changed those rules? That must have been a decision on the part of the booking committee because... Of the, course they wouldn't tell her. The referee didn't call it. The referee didn't call it when she smacked her with that kendo stick. Some very obvious favoritism from the booking committee when it comes to Inyo and her devilish actions against the women of this division. Inyo was brought in with the message that she was going to bring balance to the women's division. And I don't think that she just meant, as far as competition, I think she meant pure evil. The honest, good competition, respectful competition of the women's division has been dampered by this woman. It's good to see you, Stefan. Hop back in whenever you're available. We'll get that school work done, my friend. Inyo back on the offensive there. Oh, that neck breaker. That swinging neck breaker, taking Kara got it down. And she's going back for that kendo stick. Once again, smacking her in the midsection over and over again. And there is no way that this is by accident. She is using that famous weapon of the Roman. 
over, over and over again, right to the face of Cara Dagata. And Cara is still standing. How is she? Oh my God! And she snaps it right over Cara Dagata. A one count the defiance. Heart. These women do not want this championship around the waist of Inyo. They don't want. Oh my gosh! Oh there it is. no! She gonna tap her? No. no. She's not done. Oh, oh my gosh! That kick. What are we seeing here? The devastation. There it is. The Europe. The ref calls for a stoppage. Oh my. Gosh, that was brutal. Brutal, that beat down. You saw her put her in her submission hold, but that wasn't enough. She let her go after she already broke that kendo stick over Cardagata, and then that Uranagi. The ref had to stop the match. Inyo is not done though, you already won. You already won, Inyo. And, oh. a, and another one to the outside floor. Oh my goodness. This crowd hates. You can hear the booze oh in the background from the audience. Inyo absolutely destroyed her. Rhett Bishop, number one contenders match. This should be entertaining. You four losers can fight over the team that gets to lose at Stairway to Start. On. Meanwhile, Ronnie and I will be packing our bags for Fiji. Fiji? Okay. We're taking a much needed vacation from carrying the tag division. You've been here twice since you've won the belts. <laughs> so you heard that High Rise is going on vacation to celebrate their tag team championship run. Meanwhile, the Silver Stallions and the Tennessee Tens get to fight over who's going to start them to face High Rise. Well, I gotta tell you boys, if you guys wanna stay champions for longer, you need to ditch the sand and the sunny beaches and you need to get in the gym right you're facing two teams two the potential of facing two teams two very hungry teams and here is one half of those tactics out first come the silver stallions looking like absolute studs they are fired up and focused and ready to go this is their chance this is their chance. The odds were stacked against them going into Bluegrass Brawl. During Bluegrass Brawl, we saw a four-way gauntlet between four different teams, the Silver Stallions, the Tennessee Tens, Major Artillery, and of course, High Rise. Silver, the Silver Stallions had to start the gauntlet. They had to face all three teams. And before they got to that third match, High Rise attacked them and beat them down before the bell rang. We're gonna be turning the camera off. There's some issues that we saw, very similar to that, Tenor that, that happened Tenor. at Beat the Heat. So we do apologize, there will be no camera for the remainder of the show. Out comes the Tennessee Tens, one of the other teams from that gauntlet match. A team that is looking to continue their winning ways. They won last week against the Stallions hoping to continue to push forward. Yes, this is the third of three matches of these at hand. This is a rubber match that will determine the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships. Both teams are sharing a, a win, one apiece. And we can see at ringside, Alexa Slater has in fact joined the Stallion. As you can tell, she is in ring year she will be on the side of the stallion tonight unable to compete this week fairly grim thank you for tuning in and letting us know that the camera was glitching again we do apologize to each and everybody out there for that situation we are looking to get a replacement webcam that needs to be taken care of soon hopefully before the next stream. but that just leaves a whole lot more room for action on our screens during this beautiful titans of the ring stream Silver Stallions versus the Tennessee Tens. Adrian Flynn versus Brawlin' Matt Johnson starting out this match as the legal competitors. Brawlin' Matt Johnson taking Flynn to the ground. Knee right to the gut. Flynn using some of that, some of that, uh, those strikes, those MMA style strikes against Brawlin' Matt Johnson. Catches him here in a hill hook. 
That's not where you necessarily want Matt Johnson to be in his tag partner's corner. I don't think we were going to be able to see a victory there, but we did see Adrian work that leg over, but he did allow in a tag to the heavier handed, the much stronger Timothy Ray Young. Adrian Flynn has got to continue to push the pace of these matches. But he is out here tonight. He is focused. We're not worried about Alexis, unlike previous the previous week, after we saw that awful beatdown that definitely had Adrian distracted. Usually Adrian, as you can see, starts the matches for the Stallions. He is always the first man up. But last week we saw Andrew Sullivan. Oh my god. The first man up. Adrian It's springboard business. DDT to Timothy Ray Young. If there was any way for Adrian Flynn, the smaller of his team to take down a big guy like Timothy Ray Young, that was the way to do it. Go for a pin, one count. No, Timothy, I think it took too long to get Timothy in after that DDT. Timothy rolling out of the way, but Adrian meets him with a forearm. It was a smart move going for that pin after that springboard DDT as he drove Timothy Ray Young's head right into the apron, the hardest part of the ring, I may add. I've heard that. Timothy Ray Young once again taunting the crowd and Andrew Sullivan, giving Adrian Flynn the opportunity to go for that bridging pin. Could this be it? One. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Timothy Ray Young not giving any time for Adrian, showing he's got life, telling Adrian he's going to have to do more. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that my gosh. That dragon suplex to the back of the neck of Timothy Ray Young. Another good opportunity for Adrian Flynn to go for a pin, but he didn't get it. Adrian's incensed. He can't believe he did not get there. He goes up, but he gets caught. Oh, power slammed down to the mat. I'm with you. Come on, Adrian. Let's go book your ticket to stardom for the Stallions. They need that revenge. I never will understand Timothy Ray Young's desire to constantly poke at the bear that is Andrew Sullivan. I think Timothy Ray Young just likes a little bit of competition, so whenever they lock horns with the Silver Stallions, he's always looking after the bigger of the two. But you can't underestimate Adrian Flynn because you saw what he did to Timothy Ray Young when he was the legal man. The brawling Matt Johnson is the one with the momentum currently, punching Andrew Sullivan right in the chin. Adrian not willing to let up even an ounce. Keep pushing forward, young man. Your team has one opportunity to go to the showcase of our of our company, the biggest stage, our magnum opus. And Adrian needs to get his team there, but Adrian has brought in that much stronger, the much more powerful, the bigger one of the stallions, Andrew Sullivan, into the ring now, just working over brawling Matt Johnson. Those of you out there watching tonight, if you had to guess, who do you think has the winner's purse tonight? Who do you think is booking their ticket to stardom? Is it the Silver Stallions or is it the Tennessee Teens? Yep, and if you're watching out there on YouTube later on, drop it in the comments below. Who do you think is going on to face High Rise at Stairway to Stardom? Andrew Sullivan kicks out at two there. The Stallions, there's much belief in the Silver Stallions. I think there's a lot of people that want that. They want to see this team go on to get their revenge on High Rise. You have to believe. Boo's filling the gym as Brawling Matt Johnson taunts him and takes down Andrew Sullivan. You have to believe that the Stallions need revenge after what happened to them at Bluegrass Brawl. You have to think that with all the momentum they had, they could have been the team to want to win the Tag Team Championships that night if they hadn't have been cheated, if they hadn't have been shortcutted by high rides. Timothy Ray Young looked like he was about ready to attack Andrew Sullivan from behind. Oh my gosh, what a backcracker right on that hardest part of the ring, that steel apron. T Timothy Ray Young thought better of it, but he definitely should have because he would have saved Brawling Matt Johnson the trouble of taking a backdrop onto the apron. I'm telling you right now, that right there, that's a chiropractor bill tomorrow. You're darn right about that. Silver Stallions, Adrian Flynn getting the tag in here. Using those educated knees to make sure that he meets with the face of Brawler Matt Johnson. And now he's got that inverted figure four leg lock. Oh, my goodness. Adrian Flynn not going to make the mistake of 
letting Brawlin' Matt Johnson get close to his corner this far into the match. Five minutes have elapsed in this match, and Adrian Flynn, well, he did have the momentum. Oh my but gosh, what a suplex. But one for you. Oh my goodness. Trading Adrian. off Germans, Brawlin' Matt Johnson and Adrian Flynn in this match. I'm going to be honest with you. That's not a place you want to be. I'm not trading suplexes with someone like Adrian Flynn, who is a master of that technique. Especially not after that snap dragon suplex we saw earlier that took Brawlin' Matt, Brawlin Matt Johnson down. And he almost got the pin off of it. Adrian continuing to work over Brawlin' Matt Johnson since he's been to the corner. Is it going to be? Adrian said, how did you like that first suplex? Here's you another. Sliding German suplex from the corner of the ring. Wow. Adrian with the momentum, but Brawlin' Matt Johnson show what he's got live. Not even a one count. Brawlin' Matt Johnson saying, no way am I going down tonight. My team must go to stardom. Butterfly suplex takes Brawlin' Matt Johnson down to the mat. Timothy Ray Young anxious to get in this match. Aching for a tag in from Brawlin' Matt Johnson. But Adrian Flynn knocks him off to make sure that doesn't happen. Adrian smartly working this match. We've had a lot of complaints in the past about Adrian not being willing to make the correct moves, hesitating sometimes. But tonight, that's not the case. No, he's, he's serving back everything the Tennessee Tens have done thus far. You saw him take Timothy Ray Young off the apron just a second ago, something the Tennessee Tens have done in just about every bout they've had with the Silver Stallions. Adrian being thrown out again, but he manages to get stopped by those steps. The momentum doesn't allow him for that common run around that he does with that uh, beat when he's thrown out of the ring like that. It was a smart move from Adrian to slide outside of the ring, though, because that momentum would have taken him right into the turnbuckle. So sliding out was a good move from him. Adrian's armbar not going to get the victory here, but Adrian showing that technical prowess in this match. More suplexes, more holds, less strikes. He's definitely trying to win by what brought him to the dance at Titans to start with. You've got to wonder, though, how does, how does a match like that like the ladder match we will see at Stairway to Stardom fair for someone like Adrian Flynn, who is a technical wizard. How do you utilize ladders and weapons to your advantage when you want to be the best technical wrestler in the ring? Well, Adrian Flynn is no stranger to the top ropes and hopefully high places should be a place he's comfortable with, but maybe not quite as comfortable as, say, Rhett Bishop. The two powerhouses in Andrew Sullivan and Ronnie Hawthorne trading blows with chairs, tables, ladders, any kind of weapon they can get a hold of is up their alley. For Adrian Flynn, there's going to be a lot of adversity there in that ladder match. But much like Adrian, Rhett Bishop is even a technical wizard himself. Ronnie Hawthorne is, though, a, a, a powerhouse high flyer. He's willing to move around the ring and work. And we're sitting here talking as if the Stallions have booked their ticket. They're not. I just I have to think that a ladder match is a better fit for the Tens. I would have to say so. They seem a lot more comfortable in the in-ring environment as far as uh, ring awareness and how they use it to their advantage. We've arm, seen them... Arm drag into a pinfall for Adrian, but not only, only getting a one count. But as I was saying, the Tens, they seem a lot more comfortable using their environment to their advantage, which is something you're going to have to be comfortable with in a ladder match. We've not seen much weapon utilization from the likes of Andrew Sullivan or Adrian Flynn. What's this? Another DPT to that apron. He gave Brawl and Matt Johnson one, and he said, there's you one, Timothy Ray Young. Going for the pin after that, DDT, but still not getting it. Timothy Good. Ray Young just showing that power, not willing to stay down, not taking any time to recover, but utilizing his energy to continue to play mind games with Adrian Flynn. Which is not something you should be doing because Adrian Flynn is a lot more focused this week than when he was last week when we saw Alexis Slater 
get injured by Inyo. He got very distracted. He was in the trainer's room with her the entire time until it was time for his match. And even then, you could tell his focus wasn't all there, which is what led to this third in this series. This rubber match that we're seeing here. Timothy Ray Young with those shoulder blocks in to the midsection of um, Andrew Sullivan and then meeting him with that big knee choke in the lower corner. It seems like the tide, the momentum has turned for our Stallions. And I do think that it's going to be the team, oh, Timothy Ray Young and watching the Asian into the floor below. I do think it could be the Tennessee Tens that will book their ticket to a match top that will benefit them and may let them become the tag team champions. I can't help but think. Look, oh my God, look at the strength of Timothy Ray Young, that gorilla press overhead. Andrew Sullivan's a big guy. Timothy Ray Young just dropped him. I have to think if you're high rise, you almost want the Stallions to win. Even though you've done a plethora of things to them to hold them down, to keep them from being the tag champions. As we've talked about, the ladder match at Stardom is probably going to be more beneficial for the Tens. But I don't think that a ladder match benefits any team more so than it does High Rise. Both men with their high-flying experience and expertise. Climbing up high is kind of second nature to them. Now. Well, I mean, it is in the name. Aim high. You have to think that that's why they chose the ladder match. Uh, it's been a question I've had for High Rise. They could have had any match if they wanted, but they chose a ladder match. And they said that they're willing to take on Tennessee Tens. They're willing to take on uh, the Silver Stallions, whoever wins here, because they don't feel like they're in danger of losing their championship. And it's hard to believe or it's hard to doubt that. But Ball and Matt Johnson continuing to show life. 13 minutes elapsed in this match. We've got seven left to go. Uh, I do know the booking committee has said if it has to go into overtime, uh, it will be a sudden death finish. Whoever gets um, who it'll they'll have, uh, it will continue until there is a winner. But they are hoping that they'll win within this 20-minute time limit. Um, but there has to be a winner here. With almost 15 minutes gone from this match, you'd have to think that these guys are worn down and ready for a close. But it's absolute chaos in this ring. The Tennessee Tens have brought down both stallions. Andrew Sullivan, the legal man here, brawling Matt Johnson's got him up. Forearms and elbows right to the face and a punch right to the temple. Um. I believe the stairway to stardom is about to see the orange and black, my friend. I don't think it's going to be the blue and white. Got him up. Oh, oh my gosh. That power bomb backbreaker to Andrew Sullivan. That has to be it, doesn't it? Adrian trusting in his partner. Come on. Oh, my goodness. That lariat to the back of the head of Andrew Sullivan. You have to be worried about Sullivan's health at this point. Is he going to be able to do this? I don't think so. Oh. Oh, snap, German suplex brings him down. And unlike Adrian, when Adrian took that move earlier in the match, Sullivan's been being beat down for a while. Adrian was able to recover quickly, get to his feet, deliver one of his own, but a running senton from Brawl and Matt Johnson. At this point, I wonder if they're just playing with their food. You can see Alexis the Slater's concern on her face at ringside. Frustrated. Excited now. Andrew Sullivan showing life. He goes up with a senton of his own. He doesn't quite get all of it, but he did go for that running leg drop senton. Here we go. Come on, Sully. Fight it back, my friend. Irish whip into the corner. Throws him so hard. He bounces off of it. Going for a backbreaker there. That signature backbreaker. Oh my goodness, we are seeing the return. Knocks Timothy Ray Young off the apron. He's got Brawling Matt Johnson set up in the corner. He tags in Adrian Flynn. They're going for it. The Silver Stampede. 
Puts down Brawling Matt Johnson. Adrian Flynn goes for the pin. And that's it. The Silver Stallions cement their place at Stairway to Stardom. They have done it. But that's not their music. I thought these men were on vacation. Well, Why it seems we? they are here tonight. And you can see Red Bishop in his Hawaiian shirt and his flip-flops. They're ready for vacation, but it seems they wanted to taunt the Silver Stallions first. You see the Cincinnati colors, the orange and black for <laughs> Ronnie Hawthorne. The man's wearing flip-flops, okay? I can't take him seriously. <laughs> Represent the company better. Put some closed-toed shoes on. Oh, KJM did not make it tonight. That's what I'm hearing from the booking committee. They had to make a last minute decision. Benton Ferris' opponent at Stairway to Stardom, Deacon Price for the Twitch Championship is the replacement partner in this match. KJM reportedly did not show up to the Sean Waltman Junior High School. So we're being told that he did contact and said he refuses that he's done. Well, he still has a contract with Titans of the Ring, so I wonder how that's going to fare for him. Out first, we see Flint Finkel, the return of the Jester, alongside Silence, the Mind. We've not seen either one of these two men since Bluegrass Brawl. I think that is so strange considering Silence is he won a contract, refused to show up until I guess he could bring back Flint Finkel? Apparently, Flint Finkel has been signed to the same deal that Silence is tied to. Silence must have pulled some strings to get his buddy in here, but they took me up on the name as they came out as the Carnival of Chaos. He must have really boxed in our booking committee to make sure that they got that contract. <laughs> and out first with uh, this thrown together duo, Fenton Ferris. I can't believe KJM. A young man with such promise. Yes, he's been on a bit of a losing streak. Yes, his win-loss win record is not very pretty. And yes, he lost a, a rookie two weeks in a row, but he's leaving his mentor, his friend, Fenton Ferris hanging, going into a tag match. I think KJM might have had some really high expectations coming into Titans of the Ring, expecting to climb quickly to the top of the ladder. When he paired up with Fenton Ferris, I think he believed maybe he was he was going to launch, use that as a launching pad to go further. But when we saw him lose last week, Fenton Ferris was not at his side. He had a match of his own to prepare for, and so he couldn't be at ringside. We saw KJM storm out of the arena after that. We just didn't know that he wasn't going to return this week. All he had to do was wait it out. I can't believe the actions of the young man. Beyond unprofessional, you let the fans down who bought tickets to see you here at the Sean Walton Jr. High School Arena. And for everybody watching on Twitch and YouTube. He was a fan favorite. People loved KJM. And he let everyone down. But in a moment's notice, this man steps up. Deacon Price willing to step in and fill the void. A little strange coming from him as a lone wolf. The biker himself taking the time to stand in and not just be in a match, but partner with the man he'll face at Stardom for a championship. That beautiful, illustrious Twitch championship that I've heard so much about tonight. Yes, that Twitch championship will fill the final slot in our wonderful Hall of Gold with the Titans Regional Championship, the Titans Women's Championship, the Tag Team Championships, and now the Twitch Championship. What an honor it'll be for these two men to be the first to compete for it. It will be. Can you imagine seeing either one of these two men defend it every week on Titans of the Ring? I think that would be a good showing. Whether they open the card or close the card or anywhere in between, it is going to be amazing seeing them compete every week. Finn Ferris taking no time, rolling uh, sling blade with a drop kick. But I'm with Fairly Grant. I hate to say it, I'm going to miss KJM, 
But I have such a hard time with the actions of the young man. Absolutely. He had so much potential here in Titans of the Ring. My wonder is, is he taking his ball and going home, or is he just planning to wrestle somewhere where he thinks he can get a little more slack? I don't know. I don't know how. How can you ever run with the big dogs if you can't be in the yard with them? Winning and losing against the kind of talent and caliber that we have here only seeks to improve you. You get better by wrestling people better than you. But as far as wrestling goes, let's talk about this match. Both Flint Fickle and Silence thus far have uh, kind of teamed up on Fenton Ferris. They've got him down on the mat. It's kind of a surprising sight, if I'm being honest. I got a question. Has anybody ever bought Flint Finkel a pair of wrestling boots? Can we get him out of these stupid shoes? I sure hope so. And what about that helmet? He has to know that that can't provide you much protection, right? I mean, he just got kicked in the head and he went down. I don't know what that helped with. What's he hiding under there? Does he got a ball spot or something? I got to wonder. Finn Ferris went for a... Went for a drop kick and missed it from Flynn Finkel. Comes back around with an enziguri to make up for it. Knocking Silence off the corner. He was going to win, win a tag in from Flynn Finkel. Finkel thrown into the corner. Back elbow. And Silence is in the ring as he got something planned for Ferris. What a cheater. Come on, man. Let the match play out the way that it's supposed to. You'll oh, get your turn. Oh, oh, right to the eyes. A slap there. But what's got me confused is check out Deacon Price. No animation. Not looking at all to try to be in this match. He's out here, and he'll if Fitton Ferris manages to pull this match off against Flint Finkel and the mom silence, they'll go to the pay window, and his portion will be just as big as Fenton Ferris is. And he doesn't seem to want to be a part of this match. He's just standing there. He's not cheering. He's not encouraging his partner. What do you think is in the mind of Deacon Price right Well, now? here's a theory because I've been thinking on it, especially ever since you brought it up on why would he want to be in this match. Think about it. Before KJM no-showed Titans of the Ring, Deacon was not on this call. He was, he was not getting paid. He wasn't getting paid to be here. He saw an open spot, saw it was with the guy he's going to be facing, and he's not providing any help whatsoever. So I kind of figured he's here to get paid and maybe get in the mind of his uh, opponent at Stairway to Stardom. Hurricane Rana rolls through by Pitt and Ferris. One, two, oh, so close. Fairly <laughs> Grim, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Maybe he is the person that Russell Ryan's been talking to. I could see that. Russell doesn't want to work, neither does. And look, Finn Ferris was setting up a tag right there. He threw Silence in the corner. Deacon dropped down. He said he wanted nothing to do with it. Running Bulldog. Oh, my goodness. Deacon is just on the outside. Ferris is waiting to get a tag there. And Deacon won't get back up on the apron. No. It's, it's confusing because every other week we've seen Deacon be willing to wrestle. He's been a fighter. He loves to bring the pain and inflict pain on his opponent. But tonight, he wants no part of it. It's just... It's got me in scars. It's just so weird. Wow. Scissor whip from Finn Ferris brings down the mine. Finn Ferris setting up something else here. Look at that. Sunset flip drops the mime on the back of his head. Knocks off the gesture one more time. Oh, uh, he's calling good. for it. Getting the crowd pumped as he goes for that running fabulous kick. That fabulous heel kick brings down the mind. And now you get involved. Guarantees a winner's purse for Deacon Price. All he had to do was make sure they won the match. And look at it. The two go back and forth celebrating their victory. I don't know what Deacon's celebrating about. Deacon's saying, come on, shake my hand. We did a good job together. You didn't do anything. He made sure they got the win. Oh, oh. the disrespect from Deacon. Look at that. 
playing to the crowd. Finn Ferris raising his hands. They did win. They do have something to celebrate. Listen to the boos. Listen to the cheers. The crowd booing Deacon as he tries to celebrate this victory that he didn't really have much to do with. Here I'm cheering for Finn Ferris, who actually earned the victory. <laughs> and there goes Finn Ferris taking a victory lap. The crowd loves him. Deacon hates it. Deacon hates that the crowd is giving their admiration to Finn Ferris. Having an absolute fit. These two going back and forth is hilarious. I could watch it all night. I cannot wait for Stairway to Stardom to see those two men go. But speaking but of Russell Ryan, Stairway to Stardom, Russell, Russell Ryan will be revealing who his client is. Wow, what an announcement. So we know that he has someone in mind. I am so disgusted. Why do we have to see his picture?
We do apologize for the technical difficulties, but we are back on the mic. We do not know when you lost us, but we will be seeing Fenton Ferris, Deacon Price, Twitch Championship at Stardom. Russell Ryan will declare his first uh, client in the Titans of the Ring Company, as well as we are seeing our wonderful main event here, Ben Day Sun versus Jacob Cass going. We do apologize. We're not sure what happened with the mic, but the mic went down on us. But thankfully, we got it back up and running. And we are back at it here to finish out the stream. Um, we do apologize again for the technical difficulties. Jacob Cass working over the young Ricky Bende Sung. But Bende Sung has been given a little bit of his own, holding his own, showing that he can kind of hang with these top guys. Yes, in this main event match, very much akin to, to another rookie that we were talking about in the last match, the no-show, KJM. You know, he was given two main event opportunities within the first couple of months of Titans, and he fared pretty well. Ben Day Sung seems to have the same kind of luck. He's had two victories thus far. He's taking on a veteran in the main event of Titans of the Ring, and he's holding his own. Look at this back and forth offense between the two. He can obviously go. A very light hearted, uh, fun loving Ben Day Sung. Just enjoys wrestling, and sometimes that's what you need in a match. Oh, Jacob Cass with a moonsault. I hear that's a fan favorite of one Miss Fairly Grimm. Enjoys that moonsault. There you go. Jacob Cass delivering for you. Oh, a big super man. kick to Ben Day Sun. Taking down Ben Day Sun, but he left him a little too close to the ropes. I wonder if he was testing the rookie to see if he had the mental fortitude to know where he was at in the ring. Very true point there. But he was able to get that rope break. Oh, man. I don't even know what to call that, but it looked nice. Springboard through the middle of the ring. That signature spear from Jacob Cass. We've seen him take down tons of different competitors with that. A lot of big dudes. Thought I'd try to see if the camera was working. Still not working. Ah, okay. Glad the microphone's back, though. Yes, that way you can hear our beautiful voices here on Titans of the Ring, on Twitch, on YouTube. Again, we do apologize for that technical difficulty break that we had. But thankfully, unlike with Beat the Heat, we did not have to take down the show and pause the match to, to come back and make sure everything was working. Uh, we will be working in the future to make sure those technical difficulties are mitigated. Um, we will figure out what we need to do moving forward. Now, we're going to have to have some discussions with Mythos Tech about maybe upgrading some equipment to see what we can do there. Absolutely. They've already helped us thus far with ring mats, new aprons, new turnbuckle pans. Maybe in the future, we can get a new mic, get a new camera. Mythos, if you're listening. Well, I was going to say we're not sponsored by you because that's your whole gag, but uh, we are. We are sponsored by him. Jacob Cass going for the pin here over Bende Sung. Brought him down, but it was not enough to bring down the rookie. Bende Sung kicking out there. Jacob Cass went for the elbow right at the top of the head of Bende Sung. We want to thank Fairly Grim Designs once again this week for sponsoring uh, this main event match. Remember, if you want to reach out to Fairly Grim for any designs, you absolutely can. I know she would be more than happy to hook you up with some great designs, whether it be a logo, layouts for your own streams, among other things that are possible at fair prices for great work. Reach out, reach out to Fairly Grim and you can get a fantastic set. Yes, you can reach out to Fairly Grim at Instagram, fairly.grim, or by email at fairlygrimstudios at gmail.com. But Jacob Cass, you can reach him by the reluctant hero, and he has proven his way with that wonderful uh, Hurricane Rana there to Ben Day Sun. Is Jacob Cass about to fly? Diving double axe handle right to the head of Ben Day Sun. Here we go, sends him back in. Jacob Cass continuing to work over this young rookie. Now, I got a question for you there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Saint. What do you think Bryson Teller's thinking right now? Well, 
You're watching your opponent for stardom. Well, I'm sure he would love that. He just saw Jacob Cass take a fumble there. But Jacob Cass returns back with a big lariat. I have to say, the way that Jacob Cass handles himself and presents himself now, the way that he comes back... Down in flames! Oh my gosh, that come out of nowhere. Could that be the fate of Bryson Teller at stardom? That'll have to be it. We have not seen Jacob Cass hit the down in flames on Bryson Teller, which may be a big part of why he didn't win his match at Beat the Heat. But there is the man himself, Bryson Teller, watching Jacob Cass's victory from backstage. So we do know that Bryson Teller is watching these matches. He is paying attention to Jacob Cass. He couldn't put this man down after all the beatings, after all the backstage brawls, everything we've seen him do to Jacob Cass. We saw him beat him down after the championship match. It doesn't matter. Jacob Cass is still here to hang. And that is why he is going on to stairway to stardom to fight Bryson Teller in the main event for that Titans Regional Championship. That beautiful silver plated championship with a gold plate in the center. It is absolutely beautiful. It is the top prize of our company. It's what every man aims aims for to try to gain. And it's between these two men at the at our biggest stage. We will be coming live, coming at you live on July 29th for our magnum opus, the greatest show of the year. You see the tag team championships hanging in the background on a, from the ladders as two teams will attempt to climb their own stairways to stardom to face and become tag champions at Stairway to Stardom as well as Bryson Teller versus Jacob Cass in the main event. We want to thank you all so much. And here is our fantastic people that help provide music here for the Titans of the Ring. We do want to thank you all for coming out again this week. There is no camera. I just realized that. So the just chatting is not working. Uh, you get to see that glitched face of mine and Dylan's. Uh, but thank you all for tuning in this week. We'll see you live next week. And remember, when you are a part of the rising, you too can be a Titan. Have a wonderful evening. See you next week.